so here we are, back at the delicious location of Loathe Island. The thing about Loathe Island is it looks amazing, but there are some really horrible people on it. Uh, and if you get stuck here, you will rue the day. Let me tell you that. So, um, Ollie, I think you're going to kick us off. And I can't believe she hasn't made it before now. You know, I'm surprised she's not on this island already. I know. Meghan Markle, Brilliant. the professional victim, the yes. queen of being just a victim. Yes. All she does is seem to moan. She was just uh, doing a public speech the other day in the yeah. US. And guess what? I'm a victim. Yeah. Poor me, poor me. But she's living in a beautiful mansion in Montecito. 16 rooms, I think, isn't it? Exactly. I'm sure she has a view just like this. Yeah, and, and it's 16 toilets and nine bedrooms. Some, something like yeah. that. And, so you know, more than 16. Teams right? of staff. And I just think, you know, if you have all that privilege, you've got this incredible title yes. and responsibility as well, right. because millions of young people look up to the royals. And I think, you know, someone like Megan, just to be constantly moaning a victim, yeah. it's just not right, you know, appreciate what you've got and try and help yes. other people. I think she'd want her own kind of section of the island as well, wouldn't she? She'd <laughs> probably have it roped off as a sort of VIP area Definitely. for Megan Markle. She'd make owner. everyone bow as she well. She wouldn't recognise anybody else as being more interesting or <laughs> fascinating than her. Very good one. Um, Jess. Yeah, so my one, my first one is Rishi Sunak. Yeah. I was originally going to do Tony Blair, but I think actually Rishi Sunak well, Tony's is already an extension in there. of so, for, for yeah. good reason. So, yeah, he's yeah, already I think there. he fit right in with mm. uh, Tony Blair and Rishi Sunak because he's failed the country in every single respect. You could put all the Conservative mm. Prime Ministers on this list in this island yeah. because they failed the country, especially when it comes to immigration. The one thing the British people have consistently voted for, voted to control, and each year it keeps on skyrocketing. Yeah. And rocketing. each year, the, the Tories, have, each election year certainly, the Tories have promised to cut it. But funnily enough, in 2019, they promised to cut it down to something like 20,000 net migration per year, and it's currently running at 750,000. So that's not just a miss, is yeah. it? I mean, it, that is like a massive dope. underachievement. But it's kind of ironic that he's going to end up on an island uh, where he can't <laughs> leave, even by dirigible dinghy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's a very good point. Um, I wonder if this is like a modern day Rwanda. Send, send the Conservative Party yeah. to Rwanda, I say. Well, I would. I wish they'd go. I mean, now they're offering money for people to go there. So I mean, it's great now. You just come into this country. <laughs> you don't even have to want to stay here. Just get another three thousand quid in your pocket to mm. go somewhere else. It's like a holiday camp. <laughs> anyway, so Ollie, your next one. Um, my one is actually Kim Jong Un. Like, yes. This is the sort of person that should be banished <laughs> to an island because you no, know, his people have long suffered. You, yes. have, you have people starving. There's mm. famine. Meanwhile, he's building rockets. He's trying to make Pyongyang look, you know, uh, beautiful and right. you know, all these different skyscrapers. And these poor people are suffering. Yes. I've met a North Korean defector, Yonmi Park, a very famous author. And yes. She told me, you know, they had to eat bugs when right. they were kids. They had to eat grass. There's right. no food for these people. And you know, if you look at Kim, he's obviously. Eating all He's the He's eating well. Well, I'm told that in North Korea, if you are sort of overweight, it's 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 meant to be a good thing because it proves that you've got a lot of money uh, because you actually afford to eat food. But I think there must be some kind of rule that no one can be bigger than him because he's definitely the biggest <laughs> yeah, guy in North Korea. Everyone else is pretty be. skinny. I mean, luckily for him as well, Jeremy Corbyn's already on the island, so uh, <laughs> he could find himself a fast friend there, couldn't he? Definitely, yeah, communist buddies. I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure Jeremy would welcome him with open arms. Yeah, <laughs> they've just started, funnily enough, in North Korea, some kind of new sort of North Korean-style Netflix channel. Um, but unfortunately, it doesn't have Harry and Meghan on it. It has instead Kim Jong Un doing all sorts of things, rockets being fired, um, you know, military parades being being uh, done, and people just getting in and out of big cars. That's basically all. You should, all they've got is is everything to do with North Korea and everything to do with him. Mm. Nothing else. I'm sure they'd rather have Meghan and Harry complaining on TV than watching all these military technologies. Well, I mean, think of the think of the goodness that. Well, maybe he could hook up with Meghan on Low mm. Island and see whether they could come <laughs> up with a couple of projects together. You never know. Um, Jess, your next one. My next one is Nye Bevan, the founder yes. of the NHS. Yes. Because I honestly think the NHS is the most despicable system we've ever created. It's consistently failing mm. people. The waiting lists are so long. It is the worst thing in the world. It I really is. I think so. Well, do you remember? Jeremy Hunt said last week at the budget day, you know, it's the thing that makes him most proud to be British. I don't think anyone agrees with that anymore. I mean, there might have been a time when the NHS was great, but it certainly isn't now. Yeah, it's an absolute fantasy, this idea of a system that benefits everyone. Like Thomas Sowell said, there's no solutions, only trade-offs. Trade yeah. Have you seen the recent play with, I think it's Michael Sheen, oh, yeah. where um, he depicts Nye Bevan, it's called Nye, and he's in like his pyjamas or something, looking like Ebenezer Scrooge, and it's showing like the prophecy of, of Nye Bevan. Yeah. The NHS is seen as a god, so I, I guess by extension, Nye Bevan yeah. must be. Michael Sheen's gone a bit mad lately, though, hasn't he? <laughs> Has he? I mean, yeah. Yeah, I mean, he used to be quite a well-known and very smart guy, a very good actor. In fact, he played Tony Blair 
In fact, if, my, if Michael Sheen was put on the island, I'm going to have to think of this for a future episode of Loathe <laughs> Island, note to self, um, because he was, he was brilliant as Tony Blair and he's been brilliant in lots of things, but he, and he suddenly became a bit of a Welsh nationalist overnight and he suddenly decided to be part of the, you know, I think renaming the Brecon Beacons, something completely unpronounceable, unless you have a Welsh uh, talent. Um, and also he's taken to, to being very anti-Tory. Mm. Um, every every um, celebrity is nowadays, it well, seems. Well, yeah, it does seem that. So it's at the National Theatre I'm told this play. Um, the other thing about Nye Bevan is he could go up to Tony Blair and say, what the hell did you do to the, to the Labour Party? Because <laughs> it used to be the party for, for working people. It used to be Socialist Party, and now you've ruined it. Well, I think that shows that socialism isn't actually for the working people. No. Like, it's just this idealistic fantasy that doesn't actually work. And the NHS just shows that. This is the extension mm. of that. It just fails everyone, especially the working class, who don't have any other options. No. Well, I was just saying earlier this week that a lot of people now are going to private medicine because the NHS is so useless. So they're now clogging up the private medicine um, uh, arena. And now if you try and go private, you're facing similar weights now as the NHS because people just have got no time, just don't even bother. You know, what uh, healthcare system do they have on Low Island? Uh, I don't know actually. <laughs> we haven't got any doctors there yet, but um, I don't know whether Doctor. No, I'm not going to say Doctor Mengele because that would be wrong. Um, but you know, there's two million people now working in the NHS more than ever before. Mm. A third of the entire public sector works in the NHS, and yet they say they haven't got enough people. Yeah, I think that's ridiculous. I mean, look, the, the National Health Care Service is overstretched in terms of budget. We yeah. saw that, obviously, during the pandemic. But at the end of the day, every single person that needs access to health care should get it. You should not have an elderly lady sat you know, with severe a severe illness in the waiting room for no. 24 hours no. lying on the floor. That is so wrong. And like you said, there's 2 million employees why aren't they helping each of these people? We should have a service where, you know, somebody in the emergency room is served immediately. There shouldn't be people waiting around. I think that's completely no, a waste. It is absolutely dreadful. Right, Ollie, your final one? So um, mine is Charlotte Church. Yes. Now, we haven't heard of her for many, many years. And no. People remember her. She was a great singer. As she was a, known as the voice of an angel, wasn't she? She was, and she's she's kind of lost that now because, you know, she's using her voice to sing genocidal chants. Yes. So she was singing a... It's a new album for Christmas. I guess, Genocidal yeah. chants. <laughs> yeah, featuring Hamas. Um, so she's done this new uh, song when she was at the uh, pro-Palestinian protest, Singing from the River to the Sea, which we all know is a call right. to genocide against yes. the Jewish people. And look, she's been going to quite a few of these protests. She even had police visit her the other day because she was concerned for her safety because uh -huh. she said she was getting abused. But I saw that she put out a statement on Twitter as well, mm. didn't she, saying that she wasn't anti-Semitic at all. Um, and in fact, she wanted peace in the Middle East. But she continues to sing from the river to the sea. I remember this, this came up, I think about, what, three weeks ago? And I suddenly, I, I can't remember, I think it was on Plank of the Week it came up. And I was like, why not on earth has she suddenly decided to start doing this? I know. I mean, we haven't heard her in the news. She hasn't released a song in no. years. And suddenly she's all these protests all over the news. And, you know, th that is an anti-Semitic chant. Whatever she says, she's trying to say right. she's not anti-Semitic. That is, by definition, right. anti-Semitic. Well, I think so. I said the last time we mentioned it that her next uh, album might be called Jihad. You know, <laughs> you know. I'm Hamas, sure it will do well. You know, Hamas and, and the Hamas choir, um, you know, from <laughs> Palestine. But I wonder also whether she's going to change her name to Charlotte Mosque. Um, <laughs> because I've been waiting to say that for such a long time, and I can say it on this show. Um, because she doesn't, just definitely does seem to have more uh, sort of in common with the cause of the Palestinians and with the cause of Israel, doesn't she? Yeah, and she's not just out there protesting because she wants a ceasefire. She's generally calling the Hamas slogans, and mm. she's you know, uh, protesting with people that are hate marchers. And that there are some peaceful protesters there, but a lot of these people they are waving jihadi flags. Yeah, they're you know. Chanting. There's no question. Well, every time, mm. all you have to do, and I know you do a lot of this over the weekends because I see your, your stuff. Mm. You know, if you go to any of these marches or or you watch what social social media coverage of these marches is like, there's loads of people being really really nasty, being really aggressive. Uh, there was one last weekend I think where a guy was trying to interview people as they were walking past, and they were basically telling him to to f off, get the hell out. He was a fascist. You know, all of these sort of nutty socialist types who, who are the kind of people you used to meet at university wearing Palestinian flags. You know, but now there's thousands of them and they're all marching around all the time. Yeah, and it's become trendy it's quite as well. Putting. It's a trend. I mean, like for a celebrity that's not in the press, like Charlotte Church, and she maybe wants a bit of PR, yeah. that is getting her attention. And we're seeing so many people, young Do you think people, all these jihadis are buying her old albums? Um, yeah. I, I doubt it. I mean, go home and listen to some Charlotte Church. <laughs> I mean, they don't even listen to music in Afghanistan. They ban people listening. Oh to yeah, music. no but dancing allowed either. No, so I don't think she'll do very well there. So mm. you know, I just think it's it's ridiculous, and I think it's a way for her to stay relevant. And she doesn't really have a clue what she's on about. Yeah, I mean, if she went to Afghanistan, the Taliban wouldn't even let her probably out in public, would they? No, she'd have to have a male guardian, and she'd right. have to be fully covered, only showing her eyes. Right, blimey. 
That wouldn't be good. <laughs> right, Jess, your final one. Yes, my, my final one is Madonna. People love to hate Madonna, don't they? <laughs> for, for good reason. Yeah. So recently she's gotten into a bit of controversy for asking a disabled person in a wheelchair to stand up during a conference. I saw that, conference. yes. Uh, during this a is concert. one of her shows, right? Yeah, yeah. And she said, oh, sorry, this is politically correct. I think that's the most inoffen offensive part. It's not politically correct, it's just impolite. But because celebrities are so, yeah. they're so blinded, by being concerned about political correctness. Yeah. They can't just act like humans anymore. Right, but this is the trouble, isn't it, with the woke culture? If you adopt it, you have to basically adhere to every single part of it. And nobody can do that unless they behave like complete automatons, you know, because it's not an unnatural thing to ask somebody um, why you're not dancing at my show, but it is a bit dim not to have noticed <laughs> that they happen to be in a wheelchair, you know? I mean, it has happened before. But, you know, at the end of the day, um, it shouldn't bother anyone she should be able to laugh it off. But, of course, she can't laugh it off because she's such an ally of all of the, you know, the trans brigade and the, the LGBTQI plus whatever brigade. I mean, that's just now becoming the alphabet mixed up and jumbled around, isn't it? I mean, you say anything you like. But, yeah, but, but I mean, she's always been controversial with Donna. But the thing I think that would put most people off her is that she's now just of an age where if she wants to continue singing and dancing and gallivanting about, you know, She'll get on well with Carol Vorderman, won't she? Over she there. Certainly. Well, they'll have a competition, yeah. They'll have a competition mm. about who can make... Yeah, she's 65. I think I think <laughs> Carol Vorderman's of a similar vintage. They could make sort of um, who can TikTok... Wear the clothes? They could wear TikTok <laughs> wearing the most inappropriate clothes, couldn't they? It looks absolutely ridiculous. I think we it's need like to It's like your let... mother doing it, isn't it? <laughs> is she like, a mother? She is a mother, yeah. Oh, I can't imagine. She's a mother several times over because she had some kids with Guy Ritchie, I think. Um, she also had kids with a guy who was called Carlos the Tackle on account of the fact that he had a very large um, penis. <laughs> and um, he was one of the dancers on one of her tours, I think. Um, but, yeah, so I think, I think she's got three or four or maybe more kids. Mm. And they must all go, come on, Mum. I mean, it must be embarrassing for the kids, you know, to see their mum on stage in fishnets, spreading her legs. Yeah. And, you know, she's doing strip dances. And I just think, come on, Madonna, you've had your heyday. You no, know, let people remember you for the great singer and performer you are. Yeah, you don't yeah. Need because to she is. Yourself. I she mean, is. she was yeah. an incredible performer. But she's cheating And she herself. has written some amazing songs. Mm. And she is, I mean, if you were ever going to talk about music of the 80s and the 90s, you would certainly have to have Madonna in there. Mm. But now, I don't, I'm not quite sure who's going to see her, <laughs> you know? Yeah, she was so pretty before and it was so iconic and now, and now it's of just... Of course, that's ugh. the other thing. Now she looks like a fish, doesn't she? Yeah. I mean, maybe she's, she could hang out with uh, my and Michael Jackson on the beach near the fish um, because they both look nothing like they used to. Yeah, mm. I mean, Because, I mean, there's one thing to do. I mean, Ollie, you're an expert in this, aren't you? Certainly am, I mean, yeah. there are things that you can do. Um, but you look fine, though, whereas... She's just gone a step too far, it seems to me. She has, and look, I know there's a pressure in Hollywood for celebrities to look a certain way, and they all want to compete to look young, because that is what sells, but Madonna really did took it too far, because firstly, she really overuses the filters. Yes. I mean, the Photoshop is just another level, and right. then she claims that she's not using filters. But the surgery, if you remember when she was on stage um, last year and she had the plaits, I think it was right. at the MTV mm. Awards or something, yeah. she had that face was so bloated, and you could clearly see she just had a face that yeah. I think, come on, you know, you've got the best doctors in the world. Yeah. Do a better job than that. Yeah, but what comes over people? Do you think that makes them convinced that actually it looks okay? Well, is I it like a sort of a, a, is it like something that they 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 kind of believe in themselves and they go, oh, uh, this is absolutely brilliant. This is exactly how I want to look, and everybody else is going, sorry, are you sure? I think it's her lifestyle because look, she was trying to relive her heyday. She's trying to perform. She's still performing, doing yeah. concerts and stuff. And she's still she, making a lot of money, I guess. Of course. So she wants to look like she used to, but unfortunately, mm. you can't turn the clock back that far. And I think you know the face is so tight now; she has no expression, and no. you yeah. can't really see what yeah. she's thinking. I can try to her exactly, and <laughs> she's all stuck. You know, <laughs> so that was Loath Island for this week. So we've added in. Here we go: Meghan Markle, Rishi Sunak, Kim Jong Un, um, Nye Bevan. Bevan. Charlotte Church and Madonna. This is brilliant. Um, this is going to be the greatest reality show ever. I think we might be able to raise some funds to actually get lookalikes of these people to go onto a real love, uh, Loathe Island uh, and interact with each other. We'll see you next time.